Hey Canucks fans, welcome to Clay's Canucks Commentary for Tuesday, July the 17th. I'm Clay Emo at Canuck Clay on Twitter. I'm at Clayton Emo on Instagram, and I'm a founding member of the GLCPC, the Good Looking Canucks Positivity Club. Last Friday, I tried something new in my video. I said I'm going to do my first ever AMA, Ask Me Anything, and you responded in kind with over two dozen questions, most of them really good. Actually, all of them, no, most of them really good. And for today's video, I'm going to answer every single one, no matter how serious, no matter how trivial. And I, hopefully by the end of this, you'll have a even more appreciation or not appreciation. That's the wrong word. You understand more of my passion for the Vancouver Canucks. There's a couple of funny personal questions in there, which I will answer. And I appreciate you taking the time to ask the question. And I will certainly uh, make the time to answer your question, given that you made the time to ask it. Hope that made sense. A couple of things I realized, though, next time I do this, I think I do this more often. This, this is going to be a lot of fun, I think. But next time I do this, I think I'm going to respond to some of the questions by by typing out a reply in the comment section. I think some of these are quick answers that I can just type out easy. A lot of them, though, are going to be a little longer and I have to elaborate, obviously, verbally, so that makes sense. And I, the other thing is I'm not going to mention anyone's name, although I appreciate all of you asking questions for fear of uh, butchering it or mispronouncing it or skipping someone. So trust, though, that if your question's there, I will answer it right now in this video. And here we go. When do you see the Canucks making the playoffs? Oh, one other thing I was going to say is I haven't seen, I only read, read these questions once, but I haven't formulated answers in my head. So everything that uh, comes out now will be basically spontaneous, much like most of my videos, for better or for worse. Okay, here we go. When do you see the Canucks making the playoffs? Uh, not the next year, not the year after, but the year after that. So the third season of the post era, that would be 2020, 2021. Um, that will be three years of Elias Pettersson. That will be hopefully two or three years of Quinn Hughes, other guys like Gaudet and Dahlin coming in. Um, Ulevi, of course, and then guys like Vertan and Horvat, Besser, Barchi, all, all maturing as well. So let's look at that three years from now. Book it, April 2021. <clears throat> I think I said it there. April 2021, Canucks back in the playoffs and making a deep playoff run. We'll see. Has the hockey guy ever had an original thought? Um, I see some of his videos. I think he does have a lot of original thoughts. <clears throat> he has a good following, obviously a very strong following. And I, I, I really admire the dedication that he puts in the video, in, into his videos. I don't watch all of them, um, but uh, yeah, I, I, I think he, obviously to have that many followers and have that, have that much of a following and have a lot of people really counting and trusting on what he's saying, he does have original thoughts. I'm not sure if that was a loaded question or you're trying to get me in trouble. I'll just leave it at that. Can you remember the moment you were hooked on Vancouver hockey? What was that moment? That would definitely be 1982, the Vancouver Canucks Stanley Cup run against the New York Islanders. Yes, we got swept for nothing, but 82, I was four years old. Yes, I'm old. I know I'm 44 years old. If you're trying to do the math, I'll, let me do it for you. But yeah, um, I grew up as a hockey fan, listening to all the games, uh, listening to Jim Robson and Tom Larscheid on the CKNW, listening to all the games with my dad and my brother on his little AM radio there. And seeing those, and obviously not every game was televised back then, but certainly the playoffs were and watching the Vancouver Canucks on TV in 1982, trying to play against these mighty New York Islanders who are in the middle of a uh, dynasty, so to speak. Uh, yeah, that was when I got hooked and I've been hooked ever since. So grew up a Canucks fan and eight years old, saw that Stanley Cup run. And of course, um, the rest, as they say, is history. Best score you've achieved in bowling. Uh, my best 10 pin score is 244. It's not bad, it's, it's, it's pretty good actually, considering a, a, a perfect score is 300. Um, my kids, Jacob is the middle guy, the provincial medalist, has, uh, I think his high score is 279. And my other son, Sean, I think has a game in the 260s. So I'm not far behind at 244. At least it's more than my weight by about 50 or 60 pounds. So um, I, I would love to get a 250 game. I don't think I get a 300 game, but I'd love to get that over 250. But 244 is my best score in 10 pin bowling. Where do you think Eric Carlson is going to play next season? We hear that the front runners are Tampa and Dallas. If I had to bet, though, I'm going with Tampa because there was that big rumor about a week and a half ago where it sounded like it was going to happen and it was a done deal, and then that obviously did not happen. But where there's smoke, there's usually fire. So if I had to you know, handicap Tampa versus Dallas, I have a feeling that Tampa is going to be the front runner, but not by much. I wouldn't be surprised if you end up going to the Stars as well. Most overrated Canucks prospect, most underrated Canucks prospect. Oh, this, uh, underrated, I, I got a couple. I think that, uh, I think Michael DiPietro, uh, the goaltender, is going to really push Demko in about four or five years for that starting position. So uh, whether that's underrated or maybe I just see a lot of potential, I, I'd say Michael DiPietro. Petrus Palmu, I was very impressed with at the Young Stars tournament. His size, we'll see if that's a detriment, uh, but hopefully not, considering we're saying the same thing about Quinn Hughes. But Petrus Palmu, I think, will be very good as well. Overrated Canucks prospect. This is dangerous. It's hard to say they're overrated. Uh, obviously, Ole Ulevi came in with a lot of hype 
as a fifth overall draft pick two years ago. I wouldn't call him overrated, but I think uh, as much as it takes defensemen longer to, to mature, I think Canucks fans do want to see um, him start to produce and make the lineup this year. And the Quinn Hughes factor obviously adds an intriguing element to that. How's that for sitting on the fence? Okay. Let's go. Have you ever grown a mustache? <laughs> uh, believe it or not, I have. I think it took me about seven years to do so. No, I, I have grown. It wasn't, it, it doesn't say have you ever grown a good looking mustache, but I had one of those goatees, I guess, where I had a mustache here and then whiskers here and then little here. I still have my, my soul patch that's getting littered with uh, white hair now. But yes, I have grown a mustache. I've never done mustache with no beard because that would look, make me even look even worse than I am now. Even, although I'm a member of the GLCPC. Not just a member, uh, a co-founder. But yes, I have grown a mustache as part of a goatee. Kind of did that circular thing that a lot of Asian guys you see doing. That's a good question, actually. Who will get more points at their peak, Dahlen or Hughes? Now, Dahlen is spelled D-A-H-L-E-N. So I'm presuming he's saying Jonathan Dahlen, like our Dahlen, um, as opposed to Rasmus Dahlen. Because if it's Dahlen or Hughes, obviously I'm going Dahlen. If it's Dahlen or Hughes at their peak, ooh, that's a toughie. You know, does Hughes peak at a 40 or 50 point defenseman? Will Dahlin get more than that? I would say, yeah, I'd say maybe Jonathan Dahlin. Oh, gosh, this is a toss up. I could see Dahlin getting, you know, a 50 to 60 point season, but I could easily see Quinn Hughes getting a 50 to 60 point season. Actually, I'm going back on it. If Dahlin peaks at a, as a second line center or second line forward, I should say, usually that's good for about 40 to 60 points, 40 to 50, 55 points. Whereas Hughes is a first line D-man, a first parent D-man may peak may have a 50 point season in him maybe a 60 if he's amazing down the road okay i'm just gonna say quinn hughes i don't know unless that's dolan versus jack hughes. no i'm pretty sure that's jonathan dolan versus quinn hughes i'm going quinn hughes but only by a whisker again sitting on the fence i'm not very good at these things okay hey clay did you ever play hockey as a kid growing up i'm the oldest of seven kids i'm a mo single mom couldn't afford to put me in hockey my oldest son however plays hockey and loves it and it's nice to see the passion he has for it awesome thanks chris i will mention this one thanks chris for that story um, no, never competitive hockey. I'm a decent ice skater. I took power skating and figure skating, so I'm a decent skater. I'm decent hockey skill set, but those never emerged. I never went into to play ice hockey. I'm growing up a lot of street hockey every day. In, in fact, my, my friends, my, my late father, who I've talked about a lot on this channel, um, so popular with my friends. My friends would come over, knock on the door. I'd answer the door, and they'd say, hey, Clay, can your dad come out to play with us? I'm like, come on, man. I'm standing right there. So. Thankfully, they let me play too with my brother. But yes, so a lot of street hockey growing up, never any competitive, uh, you know, or, or organized hockey. And for the past seven years, I have been playing in a roller hockey league, an adult roller hockey league. I know my role. I'm the guy who basically goes in front of the net and, screen, whoops, and screens the goalie because of my big butt. But yes, I've been playing a roller hockey for the past seven years um, as part of the Holy Rollers. How's that for a team name? But no, never um, growing up. And I'm really glad, Chris, that your oldest son plays, and I'm glad that uh, you've been able to give him that opportunity, an opportunity that you didn't have as a child. So that's a really cool story. Thanks for sharing that. Who is your favorite Canuck in the history of the franchise? Wow. If I had to boil it down to one, I've, I've always had an affinity to, for, for Roberto Luongo. Have his jersey, met him a few times, um, did a couple songs about him, including a very popular one that he responded to. We did End of the Road, Boys to Men classic when he got traded um, to Florida. So I think Luongo is my favorite. You know, a couple others. I, I really like Bo Horvat and Jake Furtana right now. And I've always admired the Sedins and Trevor Linden, um, who are, um, you know, another uh, Canuck that I, legend that I've been able to spend some time with. But if I had to pick one, it would be indeed Roberto Luongo. And I think uh, he, he, he obviously backstopped us to, to one game within the Stanley Cup. Um, a lot, he was in the news a lot, a lot of stories about him. Never a dull moment with him. But yes, it would be Roberto Luongo. Do the Canucks have a private WhatsApp group? And what do they chat about on there? If they do, I certainly am not part of it, so I wouldn't know what they chat about. Um, yeah, that's a good question. That's an interesting question, but I wouldn't know. What are your three most hated NHL teams? Boston Bruins, for sure. I am over 2011, but I still don't like anything about that franchise. I don't like Boston. I don't like, um, you know, actually Boston's the only team I, I really hate um, dislike you know I'm not really a fan of of Carolina or or Columbus or any of the not just because they're smaller market or whatever or um, but a lot of actually a lot of teams I, I just don't care about I, it's not much about who I hate or dislike um, uh, but it's more about who I like obviously the Vancouver Canucks. you know no I'm not gonna sit on the fence that's that's not fair you asked a good question so I will say Boston 
I will say Calgary because you know the Canucks do have some history, whether it's a line brawl or some playoff history. And for a third team, you know, I don't hate Chicago, even though we can we couldn't beat them for a few years. Um, I don't hate Carolina. I just don't know anything about them. Okay, let's go Boston, Calgary, and and Edmonton just because of the rivalry. But whatever. Okay. <laughs> Hi Clay. Who do you think the Canucks? Well, what do you think the Canucks should do with their uniforms? There's a rumors of a uniform change in the next couple seasons. Remo- removal of the Orca, apparently. What should they do with their uniforms? Well, I think they should wear them. Uh, thank you. Um, I think that they will have an alternate jersey. There's rumors that the Canucks are one of the 20 teams that will have a return to their third alternate jersey now, now that um, Adidas has been in there for a year. What should I think? They I think they should move away from the, the Orca um, for a change, whether it's a Johnny Canuck or a Stick and Rink or a brand new j- design. So to answer your question, I, I think they should move away from the Orca eventually. It's been over 20 years. Um, and maybe we'll see hints of that with a third jersey this season. Would you like to play roller hockey this Sunday at Killarney, please? I'm a little short on players this week. I don't know what team you played for. Uh, this was obviously it happened on the weekend, um, so I had my own game. I'm sorry I couldn't join you. I hope you guys won. You wouldn't want me on your team anyways, unless you need a guy who just stands in front of his, the net, the posing net with his big butt, as I mentioned. If Pedersen starts on the wing, could Gaudet be in the lineup? Uh, no. Uh, regardless of Pedersen starting on the wing, ah. Uh, I think it's a tough one. I, I think Gaudet's going to be hard pressed to to make the lineup out of the training camp for opening night, only because um, he got a good four game look last year. He played okay, didn't do anything spectacular, but with all the free agent signings, Schaller, Roussel, and and Beagle, and with all the the other uh, maybe prospects you say might be ahead of him, good at I.E. Pedersen. Even if Pedersen starts on the wing, and I'll get to my lines in a later question, um, I I see the four centers being Horvat, Sutter. Beagle, and then maybe Gramlin or Gagne playing in the middle, actually ahead of Gaudet, or even Brendan Gauntz. Um It's not what I want to see. I want to see Gaudet play, but um, I think it's, it's going to be hard-pressed for Gaudet to be in the lineup, and I'll get to that in a, in a later question. Right now, we have potential 16 or 17 potential... F- oh, it says cowards. I th- I'm pretty sure you meant forwards. We have 16 or 17 potential forwards and 10 potential D-men. Who gets traded? Who gets sent down? And what will the ideal lines be? Okay, um, I said earlier that in an earlier video that I would go Besser, Horvat, and Barchi. I would go Pedersen between Eriksson and Vertanen. Then the bottom six, I'd have some combination of the three new guys, Roussel, Schaller, Beagle, and then you have, you have uh, Gagne in there, you have Sutter, and you have Granlin. So those would be the bottom six. And then on the outside looking, you have guys like Leipzig, Godolden, uh, Gantz, Archibald, so on and so forth. If um, I've, I've seen that some talk about Barchi moving down the second line to play with Pedersen, so it'd be Pedersen, Barchi, and Eriksson. Britannia gets bumped down, so one of those bottom six that I just mentioned may come out. That might be Marcus Granlin, and then giving a chance for a Godolbin or a Leipzig to be in the top line. So that could happen as well. Uh, with defensemen, um, I want Quinn Hughes to play. I don't know if he will, but let's say he does play. Then you have Hughes and Tanev, you have Edler Stetcher, and then you likely have Delzato and and. Uh, Good Branson as your top six and then you have guys like Pugliot, uh, maybe Hutton is your number seven and then you have Pugliot and Biega and Ulevi fighting to get in. I'm not sure if I see a lineup that has both Hughes and Ulevi in at least to start the season but as we know um, there's always injuries so uh, you will see both those players or at least Ulevi you'll get him in Hughes depending on his decision about Michigan so but that's what I would see if, in a perfect world I would see Hughes, Tanev, Edler, Stetcher, Good Branson and Del Zotto with Hutton as the 7th, Yulevi as the 7th and the 8th, and then Pugliot and Viega not, not in, the, in the starting lineup. So who gets sent down? Well, we know that a lot of these veterans are not waiver, or they are waiver eligible, meaning they couldn't get plucked by other teams, but that's a risk that the Canucks are going to have to take, whether you call that bad asset management or whatever it may be. We'll have to see what happens, but I could see someone like a Godolbin or a Leipzig or Granlin even, um, you know, as Granlin's only on a one-year contract, maybe those guys get waived to make room but we'll see we'll see what happens there's a, there's a lot that can happen between now and and july excuse me now, today's july now and september and october and to la- lastly who gets traded um you know i think you look at guys like the sutter's name's been in there but i, I think uh, travis green really likes them so who gets traded maybe you try and move some of the the guys that will be battling anyways like the godolbins like the grandlands like the Leipzig. Um, of the world. So tough to say, maybe it, it does, does Hutton have any trade value? No, he's got a big contract. Stetcher's not even signed yet, Vertan's not even signed. So tough to see who will get traded. Who are some 2019 free agents that Canucks could target? Oh, 
This one, I, I didn't do any research, so I have no clue who's coming free next year. So I, I'm going to take a pass on that one, but I'll answer that next time. Or I'll answer that in the comments, actually, once I get, uh, once I, um, you know, I be able to do a bit of research. So I'm sorry I can't answer that question, but at least you have another one. In your opinion, who's the most exciting prospect outside of Hughes, Pedersen, or Demko? I will tell you, I mentioned I like Mike Di DiPietro, as I mentioned. I think he can, he can battle Demko for the starting uh, goaltending spot in a few years. And the one guy I was impressed with at the Young Stars was Cole Lind. Um, he's big, he's fast, and he looked like a man amongst boys there. So Cole Lind is the one. I know the Canucks were very happy to get him at the start of the second round last year. So Cole Lind is the one who I'm very, very excited about. What was the first Canucks game you ever went to? I actually can't remember that. Um, I should. It was definitely a Pacific Coliseum game, obviously, but I don't think it was that early in my Canucks fandom. I think it might have been more when I was a teen, so that would put me in the maybe the late 80s, but I, I truly can't remember the first game. Yeah, what a, what a good fan day. I can't remember the first game I went to. All right, four more and then we're done. Do you think this World Cup was better than the 2014 World Cup? I did follow this World Cup more because um, Japan had a chance. They did a little bit better. They at least made it to uh, through the group stage on on fair play rules, but at least they made it. So I was interested in Japan, of course. Too bad they gave up that late goal against Belgium. Um, I, I watched the final, and I thought there were a lot of, you know, introduce, introduction of VAR, you know, and the controversy and, and that that brought. So I thought there were a lot of good stories in the World Cup, how Croatia kept winning in extra time. 2014, the only game I really remember is Brazil getting smoked 7-1 by Germany, I think it was. So I, I would say, just because I was more interested and more time and then I knew more of the teams, I would say that I enjoyed this year's World Cup more than 2014. Was it better? I don't know. I'll leave that to your soccer experts. But for me, I enjoyed the 2014, excuse me, the, this year's more than the 2014 one. Last three. What are your line predictions? Also, what do you think we we're going to do with Godobin, Mott, and those extra players? Kind of touched on that earlier. Uh, to reminder, I'd go Besser, Horvat, Barchi. I'd go Pedersen between Vertanen and Eriksson. Then some combination of Bigo Schaller, uh, Roussel, Granlin, Gagne, and Sutter is your bottom six. So that means Godobin, Mott, Archibald. Gaunts, Leipzig, all those guys will be outside looking in, uh, Godet, a couple of those will be obviously healthy scratches, so you, and then there'll be injuries, so we'll get to see a lot of those guys throughout the year, it's just a matter of can they start in Utica, can the Canucks hide them, or at least not lose any of them to waivers before that. Last two, hey Clay, did you ever try to put the Vancouver Canucks scarf on the statue that used to be on the grounds of Rogers Arena that is now on the grounds of Vancouver General Hospital? Uh, no, I've never done put a scarf on any statue. And lastly, who else is a member of the GLCPC? Wow, what a great way to end. Anyone can be a member of the GLCPC, the Good Looking Canucks Positivity Club. Just two criteria. You gotta be good looking, even if no one else thinks so. If you think you're good looking, then you're good looking. And you gotta be a Canucks fan. Who's positive? I forgot about that, Positivity Club. So as long as you're good looking and you're a positive Canucks fan, you're in. We have many, many people. I've lost track because we have no registration system. We have no fees. We have no tracking. We have no database. If you say you're in the GLCPC, then you're in the GLCPC. Okay, friends, thanks for sitting through that though. This is coming up on 20 minutes. Um, this is probably a little long, but that's because I did answer every question. So thank you for taking the time to type out your question. I hope uh, you were okay, satisfied by, with my response, except for the guy who asked about the 2019 free agent class. Sorry, I, I will get back to you, I promise. And I really appreciate you taking the time to ask questions and to, to listen for your answers. Leave a comment below. I'm not going to write out a written answer to all these, but you can comment below on my answer to your question if you like. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't done so already. Give this video a like if you like what I'm doing. And thanks again, always, for your support and for, for taking the time to ask questions. Have a great day. I'll check in with you soon. God bless and go Canucks go.